Hi, this is Shar from Bricks, and today I'm thrilled to share the highlights of our latest release, Bricks 1.10. This update is packed with over 100 new changes, including bug fixes, improvements, and brand new features. We're well on our way to the 2.0 release, but for now, let's focus on the cool new stuff we've added in this version. So without further ado, here are the highlights of Bricks 1.10. Now, first up, we've made some big updates to the code element. We now have individual controls for HTML, PHP, CSS, and JavaScript for the code element. So let's check this out. So this is the new code element now. Uh, now it has three controls. So the first being for PHP and HTML, the second for CSS, and the third for JavaScript. So now you no longer have to wrap your CSS within style tags or your JavaScript within script tags because you can just start writing your uh, CSS and JavaScript straight away. Uh, also, if you notice, there's Vim mode now, uh, which I have enabled here. So I can basically copy these, paste, paste, undo, undo. And so if you'd like to use Vim key bindings, head over to Brick Settings. Uh, under Builder, and then you have the option to toggle Code Control Vim, and then each user on your site can toggle this on or off uh, individually. We've also made some other improvements to the code settings in general, uh, like auto close brackets and auto close HTML tags. So, for example, if I head over to Page Settings and I add some custom code and I try to type, for example, script then it auto closes. Um, I can also do the same, for example, my CSS code element here. Um, so for example, if I try to do section, if I open a curly bracket, it's gonna be auto closed. But that's just a neat quality of life improvement there. And we've also added our syntax highlighting to PHP and JavaScript for now. Uh, so for example, if I, let's make this clear so it's easier to see. So for example, if I accidentally add a letter here and I start typing again, I'll be able to see that there's something wrong in my PHP code. Uh, similar thing here in JavaScript, as you can see, there's some gibberish there and I get a warning. Uh, if I, for example, also say, define a constant called magic number, set it to three, and then later on I try to reassign the magic number, to say five, and since it's const, you can't reassign it, so you get this error. Magic number has already been declared. So you know that there is something wrong there. And so that's it for the code element. So let's move to the second highlight, which is enhanced element and class settings, uh, where you're able now to show the modified element and class settings, and also improved settings search. So for example, here I selected the stretch text element, and as you can see, we have the search bar at the very bottom here where we can search for um, the settings of this element, uh, which already existed before, but the icon was a bit harder to notice. Now it's very clearly defined here at the bottom and we have this toggle right here called modified. And if I toggle it, it's gonna show me only the settings uh, that were um, modified. Uh, so this is very neat if you want to find only the settings that were modified for a certain element at the ID level as well as the class level. So if I add, for example, a test class and, for example, okay, I have to clear this modified toggle and give it, for example, background color. Let's give it this yellow. If I toggle modified on this test class, it's gonna show me the background settings and I can toggle it back and it's gonna show me all settings again. So that's another quality of life improvement. And the next highlight is going to be my templates generate screenshots in bulk on save. Now managing templates should be straightforward, but it hasn't always been easy to find the template you're looking for in the builder. Uh, so that's why we've made significant upgrades to the templates manager. Um, you can now generate screenshots in bulk and I'll save. And uh, to access this feature, you actually have to first enable it under brick settings, templates, template screenshots. 
So you can enable it there. And I'm gonna get into template thumbnail column in a bit. It's also related, but let's focus on template screenshots first. So let's go back to the builder. So if I open the templates manager, you'll see we have now a slightly different layout than what we had before. And it's still nothing crazy yet. I have this new toggle, the view. You can toggle from a grid view to a list view. So if you prefer lists, you have it now. But what's cool is that if you enable template screenshots, now let's try and edit a template, for example, this pop-up in query. And let's say I hit, I'm working and I hit save. If I check the templates library, you'll see that we have a screenshot now. Now, if you have a featured image, it's gonna precede the screenshot. So if you already have featured images, don't worry, that's fine. They're still gonna be used uh, instead of the screenshots. But if you don't want to set up a featured image manually, this is really great. So if I, for example, change the background color to this red, it's save so templates, you'll see it is updated automatically. So that's already pretty cool, especially if you're starting with a new website and you're, as you're building your screenshots, uh, get updated constantly. Uh, but uh, yeah, it would still be a daunting task if you already have a couple of uh, templates in your template library. Uh, so we've added this generate screenshots icon to the template manager, which will generate screenshots in bulk to all of your templates. So if I hit generate screenshots, it's going to start generating, say generating screenshots and it'll show the progress and it'll generate uh, the screenshots automatically. I can actually click away and work on my template and go back to templates and boom, uh, you'll get a message that everything was generated. And yeah, you can see we can view our template screenshots. That's pretty cool. What we can actually also do is choose a template type, for example, header on only generate screenshots for the header. So if I choose to type header and I hit generate screenshots, it's going to generate screenshots only for these two headers. And now that we already have these screenshots, you might want to showcase these uh, on the WP admin side. So that's why we introduced this thumbnail column, uh, which you can enable under brick settings, templates, template thumbnail column. If you have this enabled and you have the screenshots or featured image, uh, if you visit templates, You'll see we have this new column here, thumbnail, and it's going to show you the thumbnail uh, of your template. So, so just like the template manager, it's going to show the featured image if it exists. If it doesn't, it's going to uh, show the generated screenshot. And if I click, for example, on this generated screenshot, it's going to take me to uh, the template itself. Yeah, so next, template manager, list and grid view, which I've already shown. Uh, if you visit the template manager, you can switch between uh, grid view and um, with masonry layout or list view. And your pick or your choice will be persisted. So if I click away, click template manager again, still in the list view. Next up, lightbox improvements. So now we have thumbnail navigation. We have captions, padding, and image click action. So let's check them out. So I have this image gallery right here, and I've enabled caption, thumbnail navigation, and also have set some padding, 100, top, right, bottom, left, so on all sides. And for the first image, I already have caption uh, in the media library. So let's check this out in the front end. So if I click this first image, you'll see now we have this thumbnail navigation at the bottom and I have the caption being shown with the light box here. I can, of course, click the arrows to navigate or click the thumbnail and it takes me to the correct image. So let's go back to the image gallery settings and take a look at image click action. So you can specify what action should be taken when you click the image. 
By default, it's going to be zoom, but if you prefer, for example, to close the light box, you can uh, choose close. Let's hit save. This is now updated. And so now if I click again, it will be closed. Now, next up, dynamic data, text, and image fallback. Now, handling cases where dynamic data might be empty used to be a bit annoying. You have to use conditions, duplicate elements, and you have to make sure those two elements were similar. But that's no more the case. We've made it really simple. You can now pass arguments to any dynamic data tag. Use fallback for text fallbacks and fallback image to provide an attachment ID or a URL for image fallbacks. And so to showcase this, I have this text right here, fallback text, and then I have a dynamic data tag um, using ACF tagline uh, defined on my page here. So I have a tagline, this is the tagline. And if I view this in the front end, you'll see there is a tagline. Um, but what if I edited this page and we no longer have a tagline, and I hit update, boom, now we have my fallback text because right here I've defined at fallback and defined it to be my fallback text. Pretty awesome. So what about images? Uh, for images, we have at fallback hyphen image, and then you can pass the attachment ID from your media library, uh, or you can pass a uh, URL. So for example, here I'm passing ID 341, and I'm using the featured image dynamic data tag, so it is being rendered correctly because I do have a featured image. Uh, but let's say I remove this featured image and I hit update, and then I reload, boom, now I get the fallback image instead. Next, quality of life improvement to the builder. You can now copy the Elements Bricks ID to clipboard. Uh, so we've added this copy Bricks ID to clipboard button. Um, so if I right click here, I can copy the Bricks ID. I can also do the same here from the element panel. So I can copy the CSS ID, which can be different uh, if you specify, for example, a different uh, ID, but you still needed the Bricks ID, for example, to use uh, in some dynamic data tag like query results or something similar, then you can just simply copy the Bricks ID of that element from here. Next, for pop-ups, we now support populate content setting. Uh, so let's showcase this by visiting the my pop-up that I showcased earlier. Uh, if you notice here, I'm using a post title. Uh, the post title is not the pop-ups title uh, because under settings, template settings, populate content, I've populated a sample page and so for the post title, it's showing me the title of the sample page. So just another quality of life improvement. And next for page settings, uh, custom CSS now supports breakpoints. So if I go over to settings, page settings, custom code, and let's say I've, I set a background color of maybe red. And then I switch over to mobile landscape. Now the custom CSS setting is aware of the breakpoint context. So if I set the body background color to blue, it's gonna be blue. I switch back to desktop and it's red. So that was not the case before, but it is now. Next is an accessibility improvement. We're now using focus visible instead of focus on focusable elements. So uh, for example, uh, let's say I'm trying to focus on an image. Previously, whenever you clicked um, an image, for example, or a link, then you'd get these dotted lines around them. Uh, even if you're using a mouse, uh, that's no longer the case by default, let's say, I focus here, and then I try to focus here, 
I click, click back. I'll see the dotted lines are not really added there, but if I try to navigate using the keyboard, so I hit tab, then they are shown because we're using focus visible now. So if I'm using the keyboard, I'll be able to see these borders. By default, the border is going to be a bit lighter, but you can modify it under theme styles, typography, and focus outline. So here I've set pixel blue so that it's quite visible. And next up, I'm going to show these, both of these new improvements. Uh, the first being that pseudo classes and pseudo elements now uh, support CSS functions in content like attributes, counter, or URL for images, for example. And the second, uh, you can now render custom HTML attributes on the canvas uh, if you've added them, for example, via bricks filters uh, or element settings. Uh, this is long overdue, but it's here. So let's showcase both of these features at the same time by selecting this rich text element. Uh, under style attributes, we have this data attribute data text with a value. And under sudo classes icon, you can see uh, the before. So if I select it, you'll see I have this attribute uh, CSS function. And as the value, I'm using the data attribute data text. I have this underscore, so it doesn't take effect. But if I remove it, boom, um, yeah, it works. So data attributes are being rendered in the builder. And you can use these uh, CSS functions in pseudo classes and pseudo element content. And WooCommerce users, we haven't forgotten about you uh, because we have new query loop controls for on sale, featured, hide out of stock, upsell, and cross sell. Uh, some of these already existed in the products uh, element, but now they're available under query loop settings. So if I head over to this query loop, so I'm querying uh, products, but we have these new settings under WooCommerce and I can select, for example, to only query featured uh, products and for example, uh, on sale, and then it's gonna show me only those that are featured and also on sale. In my case, it's only two products. We also have related products uh, if you want to build uh, products with the same category uh, or tag. And we also have the upsell setting, which you can uh, use, for example, on the single product page and cross sells uh, on the cart page. And finally, the last highlight I'm going to mention is reading time element, uh, which now supports query loops. And also we've improved uh, the Chinese and Japanese uh, word count calculations. So there you have it, a quick rundown of the exciting highlights in Bricks 1.10. Remember that this is just a glimpse of what's new. There are many more bug fixes and improvements included in this update. So for the full list of changes, make sure to check out the changelog at bricksbuilder.io slash changelog. And we're excited to see how you'll put these new features to use and can't wait to hear your feedback. Uh, thanks for watching and happy building.